Hello everyone, nice to have you all back for another episode of our 107 channel. Today's menu, G-Class W163, 3.5 liters diesel OM603 engine from 1995, close to being a vintage, will be tax exempted next year. What is wrong with this car? The pre-glow function is not working, amongst other things, such as two broken glow plugs as well. Culprit mostly is the relay, common issue and luckily easy to fix. This is what we get done today. Here we go, we turn ignition key to position 2, please see drop down, blow up picture at your right, the light at the uh, far right is off, either the bulb is shot or the relay of the pre-glow assembly is. We now fire up the engine and then, there it is, should be the other way around, should switch off when I fire up the engine, it is still a light. See what I mean, engine running and the light here is on, it should be off. But in this case, this component has no extra fuse no more, a common failure item actually, but well, never mind, we get it done. Well, I need to disassemble and remove the intake assembly. Somehow I need to reach the glow plugs and check if they are working. The glow plugs are deep in the dungeons of the engine bay, but later on, lucky me, with S-shaped wrenches, I can reach them. Well, with a simple multimeter, we check the functioning, we check resistance. Simply connect minus to mass such as the engine block and plus to the glow plug. Well, we start right in a second. Hope you see that white arrow pointing to the port of the glow plug. They are deep down and hard to reach. This black handle is the upper end of my plus tip being connected to one plug, the multimeter is set to ohm, which is resistance. Now place your minus tip to mass. Hear that noise beep? Seems to be okay, it is the one closest to the firewall. See that white arrow there? This is the port of the glow plug, now we check the other one. To the penultimate glow plug being checked. Oops, no noise, no beep, no resistance. Multimeter shows me wild numbers, okay. Second plug is shot for sure. Well, first and second plugs are both shot. My sense of humor. We now need to remove the intake assembly and then unbolt the non-functioning plugs without breaking them and having the lower part still stuck in the engine block. You guys get yourself a coffee. We are back in a minute when the intake assembly has been removed. I call you when I'm ready. Intake components removed, intake manifold as well. Now, plenty of room to move around. There is no way around it. That turbocharged OM603 engine is being designed that way. This is why mechanics hate engineers. Since the glow plugs are all easily accessible, I double checked with that multimeter. Actually, the one and only right way to change the glow plugs is after a long ride when the engine is still warm. Expansion of components which then have different properties in comparison to working at a stone cold engine. It is not as bad with these plugs since engines from the past, say 1995, have different tolerances and are being designed in a more simple way. 
Also, the blocks are not so thin in diameter as in comparison to new ones and take more torque when unbolting them. Modern blocks take 30 newtons at max and then they snap and break in halves. Talking about Beiru blocks this time, when bolting them in, 25 newtons are enough. We do have here a more sturdy design recommend you to buy a ratchet a small ratchet with a torque scale otherwise you are using too much force that will snap the plugs in half one end still sitting in the engine block and then you start crying for sure therefore invest in a small ratchet with torque or an extraction tool for snapped plugs it makes sense if you are strong solid frame biceps flashing it is friday evening 4 45 pm and you need a pint in a hurry to get the job done and screw it up at the end my fancy little toy my thermal infrared camera as mentioned before it is a lot easier to work on a warm engine expansion of materials i think i mentioned that before that intake manifold is being unbolted engine still got some 60 degrees celsius left that is quite all right this is just perfect Ports to combustion chambers are stuffed with paper cloth to avoid damage by dropping things such as socket size 10 <laughs> into the cylinder. Same procedure, settings on ohm resistance. Okay, functioning. Let us start. We start off with number one, working. Number two, not working. Number three, also not working. Number four, Beep beep, working, fine. Off-road car, I can barely reach the engine and me being rather under tall. Alright, that is number five and working. And number six, beep beep, working as well. Number two and three are faulty. They are being connected with a nut socket size 8 nut size 8 on the side while i'm there i loosen that one too wiggle wiggle this is why mechanics had engineers Here we are, torque is hopefully around 20 to 25, not overly tight. Before unbolting them, we spray this penetration oil into the threads to soak them in oil. Since they are in, well, bolted in in a 45 degree angle, we need to use a cloth to catch that excessive oil. It needs to get into the threads of the plug. WD-40 will do as well, I was told. There is a wide variety of oils to spray onto these plugs. A link to the product is below and for all the tools and appliances I use as well. You can also wait overnight to let that penetration oil work miracles and soften the gunk. But then the engine is stone cold the next morning. You need to decide. Small torque ratchet or extraction tool, <laughs> what to buy? Well a ratchet, let us start with a 20 newton, better be safe, not sorry. And an extended prolonged socket size 12. Most modern cars have socket size 10, which as you know always go missing for sure. But this is a 1995 vehicle, this one here will do, we will give it a try right now. You guys wish me well. Let us all hope the plug does not snap. Wiggle wiggle around the cables. Lucky me. Done. Lose. Lucky. Can now easily be unbolted by hand. Did not even use 20 newtons. Not in the mood to buy an extraction tool for this job. You see I am terrified.
the old one, voila, dirty gunky dirt all over. Over here the old one, this one brand new, the make is Beru. They come with a leaflet written in bold letters, max torque of 20 to 25 newtons with a double exclamation mark. They snap at 45 newtons, also with two exclamation marks at the end. They are rather short in comparison to many other modern diesels, they do have much longer plugs. Also with the diameter of a straw and max torque before snapping is way lower, way below 30 newton. I count myself lucky to work on old benzos with more rigid, rather mostly solid components. That. Just that. Let us check the new one. Okay, 1.5 ohm resistance. Okay, we keep going. We start bolting now. Some mechanics simply bolt them in without applicating lubricant. Me instead, I use this Liqui Moly grease for injectors and glow plugs. I really recommend that. Because if they fail some 50 or 100,000 kilometers later, you want to unbolt them without difficulties. Therefore, grease the threads well. I have heard that some mechanics use copper paste, which I do not recommend because of the high temperatures in close vicinity. When unbolting the copper paste, it is like cement in the threads and the plugs are very hard to unbolt. Use this grease and stay away from copper. Not too much, not too little, just, just enough, just fine. All right, hope you can see it well. Okay, it is moving hand tight till the end or as far as you can go. Just fine, bulb lights up when pre-glowing, then goes off when I turn the key to the end. Nice, I'm happy, good job. Job accomplished at this W603 diesel 3.5 liters, 6 cylinders. No easy job for 30 minutes since the entire intake manifold assembly had to be removed first. That takes some hours. I count myself lucky, everything went well, no complications, no bad surprises, no snapped plugs. And do not forget to get this job done while the engine is warm. Expansion, coefficients factors of different materials. Also use that lubricant spray for the threads to start with. Now I'm getting out of this place. I'm having a pint. Bye bye everybody.